that's it. I don't imagine this is going to get much bigger, right? So it's like a really fast growing kind of broccoli. If you're challenged by a short growing season, this is a great, and you like broccoli, which I do, this is a great one to grow. My understanding, this is my first season with it, so you can... Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com, and I thought I'd do a really short episode here on broccolini. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of broccoli, but unlike broccoli, it doesn't take anywhere near as long to grow. Um, I started this broccolini underneath a plastic dome, uh, you know, early in the season, like 1st of April. And it stayed under that dome till around the middle of May, late May, I guess, at which time I moved it to this part of the garden and sowed eggplant over there. And now this broccolini has put out flowers and the flowers have not uh, opened up yet. The flor uh, florets, I guess, would be the technical term. They've not opened up yet, um, but they're going to really soon. I can just tell by looking at them, they're, they're ready. Let me just uh, cut one off and show you. Okay, so there's... That's a, I don't imagine this is going to get much bigger, right? So it's like a really fast-growing kind of broccoli. If you're challenged by a short growing season, this is a great, and you like broccoli, which I do, this is a great one to grow. My understanding, this is my first season with it, so you can, you know, it's probably too late to plant it now anyway, if you're interested, unless you live in you know, a different climate than me. Um, but my understanding is that when you cut this off, uh, other ones will, you know, propagate from there and it'll put out new, new florets. Remember, what the plant is trying to do is not that it can think, it's just this is what it does. It wants to make seeds so it can perpetuate its existence like every other living thing. Um, so by taking away the floret, the plant has to put up more florets. It has to make more flowers so it can make seeds, which is what it's trying to do. So I take this, right, and I take all of these. This one's not big enough yet. Um, I'm cutting it just above what I would say is a healthy node. I took that a little bit low, but anyway. Um, right, you don't want the you don't want the plant to think it's done. It's done its work. You don't want it to think that, right? The plant makes flowers. It's going to say to itself, if plants could think, okay, I've made some seeds. I've perpetuated my existence. My work is done here. By cutting this off, you're saying no, 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 plant. <laughs> you, it's over for you if you don't make more of these things. So get to work, right? So I'm popping off all of these because I'm I'm hungry and I want to eat these and you can eat the whole thing right you can't you don't have to just eat the broccoli looking part you can eat the greens they're very kale like I guess would be the easiest way it's the same family of plant right so I'm gonna take these I got one more growing elsewhere in my garden right and I've got a nice little addition to uh, this evening stir fry I'm gonna add some uh, garlic scapes to that because my garlic is starting to put up scapes um, this is sort of off topic but uh, one of my viewers assuming this viewer watches every video I make was asking uh, when to harvest garlic scapes, uh, when the garlic curls, for me anyway, uh, the garlic produces a scape and the scape turns around and it goes back up. So once it's made a, its first full turn, that's when I'd say you harvest the scape. Um, anyway, yeah, tonight's stir fry is going to be this with the garlic scapes and some other stuff, right? Um, so yeah, just a great plant. If you're challenged with a short growing season, if it takes a while to get broccoli going, that sort of thing. Um, broccolini is a great solution to that. I wish I'd planted some more, in fact, because I love broccoli. And so do my, I've got these rare kids that actually like broccoli. It's the quintessential uh, uh, plant or a vegetable that's referenced with children saying, oh, broccoli, yuck, my kids actually like it. Or I tend to cook broccoli with a little garlic, little uh, soy sauce, a little uh, sesame seed oil, uh, some stuff like that, a little bit of salt, you know, and uh, they like it like that. Um, anyway, Broccolini, you can continue watch. I just did a, a garden tour video, so you would have seen these things, you know, a couple days ago like this. And uh, we'll follow up in a month and see if they've put up some more, because my understanding is that by harvesting like this, they're going to send up more of these. So if you don't believe me uh, and you want to just follow the thing through, that's fine. I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a wasp on this broccolini floret. And I've been standing here watching this wasp for the last, I've been in my garden, I just noticed it flying around. You notice wasps because you don't want to be bitten by them. Uh, but I noticed it landing and flying away. 
then landing, then flying away. And you know what it's doing? Uh, the last time it flew away, I noticed it had something in its grasp. And I went and looked, and I saw a dead, uh, you know, white fly larvae. You know, like the, what's it called? Cabbage moth, the little green caterpillars that uh, uh, white fly, uh, white fly, but it's a butterfly, a white fly lay on coal crops like these. And uh, the caterpillar emerges and just eats the plant to death. Uh, so I looked really close and I could see one it had just killed and I saw another one that it was just emerging very very young at the very early stage and I'm not saying this wasp or, or other wasps are going to completely take care of my white fly, white fly problem But it's wonderful to see That you have a pest problem And a predator shows up and deals with the pest problem. Uh, I think I'm going to talk a little bit more I'm going to do another video. This is just a teaser, but I'm going to do another video on this sort of thing, on uh, you know predators solving pest problems and what that's all about. But uh, I thought I'd just show this little bit here and as part of this video. Uh, I definitely have white fly caterpillars on this floret, and I just saw a moth take out at least two of them. Um, so that's just great to see that nature is doing the work, so I don't have to. I, I know I, I speak to the merits of using various. Uh, you know, organically acceptable uh, pesticides in the garden, but uh, for me the most acceptable uh, organic pesticide is other pests that kill pests. And uh, it's great to see that actually starting to happen here. Uh, the ecosystem beginning to adapt and the predators showing up to do work that I don't want to do anymore. You know, I actually got that wrong. It's not white fly. I've been calling it white fly for years. And that just goes to show why it's always good to re-research your terminology. Um, this is actually called this small white. Um, here I am on uh, Wikipedia. Uh, this is exactly what I see flying around my garden. These little white uh, butterflies. Uh, I guess uh, Pyrrhus rape, I guess is the name. Um, but yeah, they, they fly around, they lay their eggs. Uh, I think that their eggs look like this. And... Then the eggs become these nasty, nasty caterpillars that can really do a lot of damage. And that's what I use the uh, oh, BTK for, that uh, bacteria, the very temporary, uh, sh very short uh, working life bacteria for. But I haven't spread any of that on my garden yet. Um, I've seen a few of these uh, small white what a name. Anyway, small whites. <laughs> it's like a little white butterfly, right? I've seen a few of them fluttering around the garden, but I haven't seen a lot. Um, so I haven't used uh, any anything on them right uh, thus far. Um, usually in July, at some point in July, I give the uh, all of my brassicas. They tend to go after the coal crops, you know, the kale, broccoli, things like that. Um, uh, maybe one or two uh, blast of that a season is really all it seems to take to uh, to knock it back. But for right now, since it's not that big a deal, I'm I'm happy to just you know in, entice the predators in to uh, to take them out for me and and grow the predator population. Uh, I'm meaning to do a video more specific on this thing. I'm getting a little off topic, but anyway, this that's what I'm talking. I just wanted to correct myself because I know someone's going to say that's not. Um, you know, white fly, they're right, um, white butterfly, small white, I guess these aren't native to North America, they came from Europe, like, just about everything else, uh, but they're here, definitely here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, broccolini, if uh, you like broccoli, and you haven't had a lot of luck growing it, for whatever reason, maybe give broccolini a try, and you might be able to solve your broccoli problem, and these, wonderfully for me, were direct sowed outside, so I didn't even have to do the whole transplant thing, right? I sewed them over here. Once they got, uh, well, basically, once I needed that space to sew something else, I just sort of stuck my, the way I moved them is I just reached down underneath and sort of pulled the whole root bass up and then just, you know, put them in the ground. So, uh, hope you found it interesting, gave you some good ideas. And uh, if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe, check out my podcast, MaritimeGarden.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.